Matt Rivers. For Kira Obedinsky, her new iPad is everything. She's 12, after all. But the shiny screen is also a welcome distraction from an ordeal no 12-year-old should ever have to endure. Because just a few weeks ago, the young Ukrainian wasn't safe like she is now in Kyiv, but in a hospital run by Russian-backed separatists, forcibly separated from her family. When the Russians first invaded Mariupol, Kira's dad, Yemen, was still alive. Her mom had died just after she was born. When Russian bombs started to fall, they sheltered in a neighbor's basement, she recalls. But they hit the house where we were staying, she says. We were buried in the cellar. Then the rescuers took us out of the wreckage. Her dad did not emerge, Kira told us. Now an orphan, she started to walk to try and find safety amidst chaos. And then another explosion from a mine. My friend saw something on the ground, she says, and she hit it accidentally with her boot. The military came after the explosions and took us to a hospital because we were bleeding. But in some ways, her journey was just beginning. In the chaos, she was picked up by soldiers she says spoke Russian and eventually brought to a Russian-held area in Donetsk. I was taken there at night, she says. They took shrapnel out of me, out of my ear. I screamed and cried a lot. It was shortly after this happened that CNN first learned about and reported Kira's story because Russia paraded it on state TV. State propagandists showed images of Kira in a Donetsk hospital and said she was being treated well. Convinced she was being mistreated, her family went public with her story, and it worked. A deal between Russia and Ukraine allowed her grandfather to travel to Russia and bring her back to Kyiv, where she told us Russian state TV did not. It's a bad hospital there. The food there is bad, the nurses scream at you, the bed is bent like this. There wasn't enough space for all of us inside. None of that came out on Russian state TV. Her injuries have largely healed now, though she'll stay in the hospital a little longer. It was there that someone gave her that iPad. After a presidential visit came bearing gifts this week. She didn't love all that attention, though, so for now, she says she just wants to see her cat and spend time with her grandfather, recovering from the horrors of war, one game at a time. And Wolf, think about the absurdity of Russian state propaganda here. They're holding Kira up as some sort of an example of their own alleged humanity in this war, and yet the only reason she's in their care in the first place in Donetsk is because the Russian military killed her father uh, during a war that Russia started. Uh, it's just yet another example of Russia's state propaganda and, and their twisted narrative. Heartbreaking story indeed, Matt Rivers. Thank you very, very much. We have more now on the breaking news. The Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, vowing just a little while ago that Russian forces who committed atrocities in Bucha, not far from Kyiv, the capital, will face justice. Zelensky saying, and I'm quoting him now, none of these bastards will avoid responsibility. And joining us now, the Prosecutor General of Ukraine, Irina Venediktova. Irina, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know that today you announced that 10 Russian soldiers